I'm going to be doing a five part series about the five things you should know as a new streamer and this is going to be part one and this is basically going to cover just the camera and the settings through OBS and lighting that you can get your camera to look like this when it currently looks like this. As you can see there's a lot of lag here. In this video I'm going to cover a few OBS settings. I'm also going to do lighting and finally I'm going to do chroma key and green screen. So stick around and hopefully this video will help you. Alright so here we are inside OBS and I'm going to show you guys as quick as I can how I made my camera look better with a few tweaks in the settings in your camera. So what you want to do is make sure you add your camera as a source so for the sake of this video I've already got mine added but it's just video capture device and then the name of your camera. So what you want to do here is right click and then go properties. The first thing we're going to be looking at here is a few things. Uh, yours is basically going to start off as default. If you're looking at this now, it's default. I want you guys to drop this down to uh, custom. So I'm going to drop mine over to default and you're going to have a quick look at what my camera looks like. As you can see, it's no longer running in 1080p 60fps, but I have the Logitech Brio. So what it's doing is it's trying to cut down the quality here. So you're going to drop this down to custom. Now, if you have a Logitech C922 or a Logitech C20, a C920, sorry, um, you may be able to push um, a 60fps image if you drop your resolution down to 720p. So 12, uh, 1280 by 720p is where most of the lower budget cameras run in a 60fps, especially a C922. Um, the reason I believe 60fps is the way to go is if you are a streamer and you are streaming 60fps gameplay, you want to match the output that you are streaming. So if your camera's in 30 and your gameplay is in 30, awesome. But if your gameplay is in 60 and your camera is in, six, uh, in 30, there is a subconscious thing for the, uh, the viewer when they're looking at you and something just to them doesn't look right. And there's a reason for that. So I want you guys to make sure you drop it over to 60 FPS and see what the lowest resolution you can. And if you can't with your camera, just stick with a higher resolution and lower FPS. So Vox, we just quickly covered resolution, but my camera is still lagging. And even though it's 60 FPS, it doesn't look like it. There's a lot of ghosting in my hands and the image doesn't look great. How do I fix this? Well, what you want to do next is you want to press configure video. This is still in properties, guys. Uh, just where we tweak the uh, resolution. Just above, we've got configure video. The first thing we're going to be met with here, guys, is a few tabs. One called video proc amp and the other one called camera control. Uh, the first setting that I always turn off every time I start the stream is autofocus. Autofocus is terrible, guys. If you lean too far back while you got autofocus on, your camera will go out of focus and people will not be able to see you in 5-10 seconds because it will be blurry and you'll move around and people in your stream or in YouTube recordings will have a hard time seeing your camera. The next one, and this one is very, very important, guys. As you can see, my hands lagging and ghosting. It's because of a setting here called low light compensation. When I turn this off, watch what happens. You see that? Watch my hand. And now I'm going to turn it on again. Terrible, isn't it? Once that off, guys, you're going to notice that your camera looks like 60 FPS. Ta-da! We're in 60 FPS. Um, but there's a few things still that we need to cover. So we're going to apply this. Guys, you have to do this every time you start the stream. Um, there are a few programs that you can download to get them to do it for you every time. Um, uh, there's a Logitech capture program, but then you have to capture your output as Logitech Capture instead of um, the Brio or whatever the name of your webcam is. The next part of these settings that we're going to be looking at guys is pretty much in the first tab and it's called Video Proc Amp and we've got a setting here that's usually set to auto it is called White Balance. Now as you can see when I turn White Balance on it is trying very hard to balance out all the whites in my background and when my monitor becomes slightly brighter especially in light scenes it will make me become white and when it goes dark I'll become orange and you'll notice in your videos and they'll be flickering and it's just terrible in general. I always turn this off. Reason being is that you can get a certain color pigment in your skin and it will stay that way. So I usually just drag this until I no longer look like an Oompa Loompa. You'll notice if you go too far to the left you'll be blue and look like you're dead. 
And if you keep dragging it, dragging it, dragging it, the moment it becomes like you become a slightly pink tinge to your skin, that's it. That's where you hit apply. And that's it for this one, guys. We're going to quickly go dip into chroma key and lighting. So, you just cleaned up your camera and you learnt about low light compensation, white balance and autofocus, but your camera still doesn't look good and you're consider considering an upgrade. I currently have the Logitech Brio and I also have a C922, but the truth is sometimes, guys, you may not need to upgrade your camera, you may need to upgrade your lighting. As you can see, the difference between my camera the way it was and how it is now, lighting makes a massive difference. Sometimes your camera just needs better lighting to thrive. I currently use an Elgato key light and a pretty dodgily rigged Bunnings light. But I'll be completely honest with you guys, if you're not spending money on good lighting, don't even start looking at cameras. If you want some suggestions, I'll put some links down below of some stuff that I recommend to start with and invest more money in lighting and less money in cameras. A common mistake a lot of people make with their green screens is they think they're doing themselves a favor by removing their background, but it looks like this. There's a lot of green static in the background and it's hard to see the quality and clean image. Guys, there's a few reasons for this and I'm going to quickly cover them, so let's get into it. Number one, an incorrect chroma key. Uh, as you can see here guys, my chroma key is not set correctly for this lighting. If I was to turn on my lights, you would notice that the way I've adjusted my chroma key is to work perfectly with my lighting. Watch this. So here we are. This is my chroma key working the way it's intended, but that's because of my lighting. If there's one thing that I can stress to you in this video, it's the importance of lighting. I purposely wore a black shirt today to show you that black is one of the hardest colors to capture in green screen, including obviously a green shirt. Um, because it's so dark and sometimes it matches with the darker green. So if you want to really get, nail out your green screen, I would suggest using a black color. Something like a chair will always clip in the background or the top of your headphones. All right, so guys, how do I set up a green screen and how do I get it looking clean? So what you want to do is you want to go to filters and I'm going to turn my current green screen off. Now we're going to be looking at my green screen here and you guys obviously know how to add filters because we just made it this far. We're going to be adding the chroma key. Now, press the plus sign down the bottom under effect filters and then chroma key. And then we're going to name this for the sake of video key 2. And then it's going to automatically default you a chroma key. Now, this one isn't too bad, but the only problem with this is every time you have yellows, it cuts off the image. As you can see, generally, you can see my off sticker there. That's a yellow, but if you drag it, all the way down the problem is with the color that they select is if you drag it down it's not enough so you're gonna be if you're wearing like anything with yellow on it it will be cut off all right so guys how do I set up my green screen to make it more efficient what we're gonna be doing here is dragging everything down to one and then we're gonna head over to custom color now in custom color we're gonna have a key color and then we're gonna have a select color option in select color we're gonna press select and then we're going to look at this option here beneath all the basic colors called pick screen color. Now what you do is click this and as you can see when I drag over the spot on my green screen it gives me a different color code. And I'm going to drag it around until the area that I think is usually the part of my green screen that fails the most. Which is the darkest areas beneath the top of the green screen. So you guys notice when you go into someone's stream they'll have an area around here or an area around there or if they lift up their arm under there there'll be an area of their green screen that fails so you'd usually choose the darker color i don't go all the way down to the darkest darkest part but i usually find like a little medium point here between not the very top top green but around about halfway and we're going to choose that color there so this is 295 113 this will be different for everyone based on their green screen all right so what we're going to be doing is we're going to hit okay on that color now, as you notice, there's only one color that's being chroma keyed right now. So we're going to start to drag the similarity. So we're just going to continue to drag the similarity until we don't see anything other than a little bit of green in my hair. So as you notice, that green screen just cleaned up really quickly. And a really important part is, have a quick look at this. The yellow isn't being cut out. So 
guys, how do we do this? How do we get it to look a little bit cleaner? You're looking at my uh, hair here and there's a little bit of green and stuff here. So what I usually do is I start to play around with color key spill reduction. I'll start to smack this up to about around about a 10 here. This is just a, a little bit of a, a color dimming near the very, very edges of your screen. If you continue to crank this, you'll notice I'll go black and white. You don't want to lose all the color in your face, but you want just enough to only affect the very, very outer ring, which is where it's most green in your hair. Then I usually just continue to smack up a little bit of smoothness, which is basically just getting rid of some of the sharp chroma key. And I usually leave that around about a 10 or a 15. And as you're noticing guys already, not only is my camera looking better, my green screen looks very professional. Hey guys, so that concludes part one of my series on OBS for camera quality settings. If this video helped you in any way, make sure you smash that like button down there and subscribe guys. I stream six days a week on Twitch. Stay posted for the next guide.